Well, welcome this morning, Tom Roberts, the CEO and, uh, of course, the president of the uh, Greater Coosa Valley Chamber of Commerce. And, Tom, good morning to you, good sir. Good morning, Jamie Dell. Good to have you with us. And uh, as breaking news, it has to do with Childersburg as well about the impending sale of the nursing home and TCI unit or TCU unit over at Coosa Valley Medical Center. I, I have to admit that uh, that one just came to me this morning. Mm -hmm. I woke up this morning and had a message, asked me to look into it, and I haven't had the opportunity yet. But uh, I'm not going to comment on whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, or just a thing that has to happen. But the realities of nursing home facilities is that there can often be a drastic difference between them. And I know this because my sister mm -hmm. Margaret spent uh, many, years. many, 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 many yeah. years, both as a worker prior to mm -hmm. being institutionalized mm -hmm. in, in them. Uh, and the difference between them can be quite dramatic. And I hope that this is a carefully deliberated process that is patient oriented that's, that's, good. that's the most that's the most important aspect of One it thing money is them. important let's yeah. let's be real but bottom line is it going to make a difference in the quality of care one certainly, uh, one certain thing we can uh, both agree on is we're fortunate to have a hospital. Oh, absolutely we are. Absolutely we are. Most communities our size even if you take it to encompass our entire region which is an idea that I embrace, that we embrace at the Greater Coosa Valley Chamber mm -hmm. of Commerce because it's important. But even if you do uh, look at it from that point of view, the realities of the situation is most communities of our size and stature don't have their right. own hospital. They have to rely on transportation, which we also have that's very, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, between our ambulance services, the Lifesaver helicopter based in Sylacauga, we're, we're quite fortunate when it comes to health care. Uh a lot of excitement uh, in Childersburg, a lot of baseball teams coming into Childersburg for tournaments. Well, it's not just baseball, it's softball as well. Uh, the, let me find it on my list here. Childersburg is holding, hosting the Alabama Parks and Recreation Association Girls Softball Tournament. That's going to be about 30 teams. Uh, we're having a lot of people come to town, 30 teams. Think about that. You mm -hmm. start multiplying the numbers, uh, say 14, 15 kids, three coaches, how many parents, step-parents, grandparents, and other right. things that we have in coming come to town. I'm, uh, they're feverishly working to finish up the new girls softball uh, facilities over in Childersburg. I hope they can get it done in time to use those facilities because we need to put our best. It's been a long forward. time coming yeah. too. Well, these people are here for uh, a while. They spend money while they're here, but also to me, something that's even more important, let's be hospitable. Whether, it, it, whichever community is that they decide to visit and spend a little time, spend a little money, let's put our best foot forward, do a little showing off, and maybe these folks will want to come back for next year's tournament or to see some of our many uh, attractions that we have in our area, and we got bunches. No doubt about it. Uh, we talked last week about the construction going on in Childersburg, and you were talking about slow down. Well, the Childersburg Police Department has put some teeth in that slow down saying, but they've been popping some folks with Oh, tickets and the, the state troopers have been joining them, and this is vitally important. As someone who has to, on a very regular basis, uh, venture off of the inner city streets onto Highway 280, especially on the fringe areas of the construction, down the way to the north or to the mm -hmm. south. Either way, it's dangerous because people are speeding. And that makes it hard to gauge how fast they're going, how much time you have to pull out, all these factors. And uh, it, it scares me to death, literally. And the police department is studying a proposed change that came up during the um, work session prior to the meeting. They're considering, uh, I, keep, I, I keep mixing up my directions, I think it's Southwest 1st uh, Street. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the street 
right there by uh, that goes in between uh, the Piggly Wiggly Shopping Center and uh, the Curtis and Son Funeral Well, that's home. a dangerous turn right there. Well, right they're now. trying to uh, work with the state and get some physical barricades, not warning barricades. I mean, just plain, flat, shutting it down yeah. because the number of accidents there. There's wrecked. no exit turn. There's, there's, no, no, there's no. no place to be. Mm -hmm. You stop to turn left yeah. or you slow down to turn right mm -hmm. and rear end accidents are coming. I mean, they're just becoming more and more numerous every day. And that means that we need to find alternate routes to those places. They're, they exist. Now, it's going to be exacerbated somewhat by the fact that it won't be that much longer, don't really have a time frame on it, but they're going to shut down access to First Street Southeast, mm -hmm. Highway 76, mm -hmm. and the Childersburg Fayetteville Highway. Wow. <laughs> uh, people are going to have to, now locals don't have as much of a problem with the exception of what I pointed out. People that are just passing through way too fast are making it dangerous to even take the alternate routes. Just, uh, just realize there is a light at the end of the tunnel. That being is that the current estimate for when they're going to be done, completely done with this project, Jimmy Dale, is going to be August of next year. That's 14 months. That's a long time, mm -hmm. but you got to realize they've been at this a while. They're making progress. They haven't had any significant slowdowns, but we can handle it for just a little bit longer because of what it's going to mean in the long run. But uh, the, the next step... They're going to finish the new bridge, mm -hmm. por the portion they've been working on over on the west side of the road. Uh, they're going to move all the traffic, all four lanes, over to that bridge. It's going to be just like it is coming in and coming out of the construction zone right now. It's going to be four lanes tight, right there together, no median, no barricades, no nothing in between them except a couple of uh, yellow stripes. Mm -hmm. It's going to be dangerous. Again, slow down, but that will allow them the, uh, the lack of traffic to deal with the other two roads, the, 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 the original roads and bridges more efficiently, also with less danger. So it's going to get worse. In a lot of ways, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. But that's part of progress. Uh, it, there's a big effort right now, a lot of progress being made, and businesses wanting to uh, open up in Childersburg. We're seeing a lot of that. That is hampered somewhat by this sure, highway traffic. Sure. It's hard for somebody to commit. We've got a couple of construction projects that we'd love to see going on right now. For example, uh, the folks from Dairy Queen, they're still on track, committed to doing it. They ran into a few issues along the way and it slowed it down. They Where did would not that be? Get, that's going to be in the old Hardy's location. Okay. Uh, they didn't get it done before the construction. So guess what? They're going to have to wait until after it. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the same thing with O'Reilly's. They're going to move into the old Waffle King location. Mm -hmm. uh, Tierra Caliente is going to be building adjacent to where they are with a new restaurant and turning the current restaurant into something called a taqueria. It's basically a Hispanic grocery store. Mm -hmm. They're neat. They're truly, uh, uh, they have the real stuff, and mm -hmm. that's, that's great. And those are just some things that uh, are on the drawing board right now. A little bit farther down the road, we had Lakeside Stone just get rid of the old El Gringo's uh, deteriorating mm -hmm. building and put in a brand new facility. Uh, it's, it's just a matter of us setting a date and having a ribbon cutting. Uh, we also have, they have torn down the building, cleared off most of the property, and are starting on the new Jack's facility. Boy, some people are excited. Want them biscuits, want that chicken, yep. want the burgers. Uh, that's, uh, I, I haven't gone a day without having that conversation with somebody who's excited that we'll have our own. Don't have to go to Harpersville. Don't have to go to Sylacauga. They can have one right at home in Childersburg, and that's got some folks excited. But the, rail, the uh, highway construction for the railroad and the bridge, you know, raising it so the railroad can get up under there, these things hamper that kind of progress. They slow it down. So it makes the progress we're having 
uh, downtown, the progress we're having on 280, uh, even more special because it shows a lot of people are working hard to make some things happen in spite of a few handicaps. Yeah, well, if you think uh, traffic violations, driving violations are cheap, you need to think again because I saw one person who said they were fined over $400 and, and uh, then you, you multiply that by won't be long, just a couple of months, it'll be college football season and yes, all sir. this extra traffic coming through there. Absolutely. Like I said, it's inevitable. It's going to get worse before it gets better. But let's go back to those fines a minute. Yeah. Uh, depending on how fast you were going or what mm -hmm. specific violations occurred, it can be that and a whole lot more. You know how much the city of Childersburg gets for that? Mm -mm. Five bucks. Five bucks. Of, of each fine? Absolutely. Five bucks. Where's the rest of it go? There are a hundred different funds. You'd oh. have to check with each individual city to see where they go, but most of it is the state. Wow. Period. Mm -hmm. I mean, five bucks. They're not doing this to get rich. They're getting uh, uh, to the point where they want to save lives. They want to save vehicles. They want to have fewer problems. So the answer, stronger enforcement. They got dummy cars. They got real cars, sometimes three at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got the state troopers who are doing everything they can do. This is a dangerous place. It's getting more dangerous by the day. And, you know, it's part of the process. Let's deal with it as safe a manner as we can. Hate it, but, boy, is it going to make a difference when it's done. Absolutely. Tom Roberts, uh, CEO of the Greater Coosa Valley Chamber of Commerce. And uh, what else is going on with the Chamber in the next few weeks? Well, uh, a couple of things that I think are pretty doggone important because they're difference makers in bringing folks to downtown. And that's important as we continue to add to what's available downtown, and that's Schultersburg Market Day. We've got another one coming up this coming Monday, um, and that's a good one. Is but that every Monday? Every Monday. Okay. But I've kind of put a star and circled it uh, for July the 2nd. That's 4th mm -hmm. of July week. I'm hoping that we're, uh, well, I know we're going to do some special things. We're going to have uh, more and better attractions, some things that are kind of special that day to help us celebrate our nation's birthday. But... Uh, that's one I hope that people will, the growers tell me, they'll be able to provide a lot more produce on that day. We've got a lot of extra things, and I'll detail some of that next week mm -hmm. as I firm some things up. But uh, we're going to double the size of the market, if only that day, because it's important to, to do it. The biggest market we ever had while I was over the farmer's market in Sulacaga was the day that the Friday showed up on a Friday, July 4th. Biggest market we ever had. Available people coming out wanting to grab some fresh veggies to go along with whatever they mm -hmm. barbecued. I thought that was uh, was telling. And so it's not on the July 4th date itself, but it's close enough that we can, we can go ahead and start the celebration early. Tom Roberts, CEO of the Greater Coosa Valley Chamber of Commerce. Spent a couple more minutes with uh, Tom this morning. And, you know, we, we've talked about some of the bumps in the road, some of the challenges that, that we may face in the coming months for the construction is concerned. But there's a lot of excitement in Childersburg, Alabama. Oh, absolutely there is. And uh, there are a lot of positive things going on. Somebody with a little grim face uh, during the town hall portion of the meeting says, what is the mayor and the city council doing to help us attract business? It opened up a, a very positive can of worms because there were people, including myself, that were jumping up to say there's a lot going on. And there are even more in the background that we can't talk about specifically. I also heard last night that, uh, I don't know how this one slipped under our radar, but I got it from a pretty reliable source that a very recognizable industry has broken ground right here in South Talladega County. They're clearing the property. They're putting foundation stuff down. Wow, that's good news. I'm it excited. Is. I got I to gotta go dig some, some more today. Yeah. Got the reporters coming mm -hmm. out in me. That's more jobs. Yeah. The uh, report of Burger King coming to Childersburg, uh, not Burger King, but uh, 
Uh, yeah, it was Jack's. We talked about that yeah. a little bit earlier. There's so many new uh, things coming to Childersburg. <laughs> it's and hard to keep up, isn't it? That's a it nice really problem is, to have. It really is. And, and you know, the, the baseball and softball situation, it'll fill up the hotels over there, and it, it'll trigger down to Silicon and help everybody. Oh, and I want to go ahead and uh, uh, send out an invitation to you, although I'm not the invitee. I'm one of those who was invited. Uh, especially to help spread the word. But on Monday, August the 6th, from 4 to 7 p.m., Childersburg High School is going to host their annual Tiger Fest yep. celebration. Come be a vendor. You, the station, Alabama Cable Network. Bring your friends. Suggest it to everybody. Last year, we had probably half the track filled up with booths. Next, this, this next one, I want to see it all the way around the track. It's a major celebration for the school, for the athletic program, for the new facilities they have over there. Let's make it a big one. And another big event that to me is quite important, and it's uh, a passion of one of my board members, Diane Kay from Cadence Bank, because her family operates Farm Ministries, which is a, yeah. a recovery type program from uh, substance abuse. But Farm Ministry and others are gonna host a countywide end addiction Talladega County rally and walk, Noble Park. That's gonna be coming up Saturday, July the 28th from 10 a.m. That's when they're gonna start until whenever it fades out. There's gonna be music, there's gonna be food, there's gonna be all sorts of things. But what there's gonna be more than anything else is making a difference information. You're gonna learn a lot about what you, even if your life is personally uh, affected by the opioid crisis and other related type things. A lot of families are. A lot of families yeah. are, and we all need to be aware. We all need to mm -hmm. be stepping up and doing our part to help keep this from being a growing problem. If we can just keep it from getting worse, we're making progress. Absolutely. Tom Roberts, CEO of the Greater Coos Valley Chamber of Commerce. Let's do it again next week, okay? Absolutely. Sounds all fun. Right. More day break right after this.